Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum CS Pro users. Welcome to this tutorial on how to sort data in array table. If you are not already familiar with arrays, I recommend that you first watch some introductory YouTube tutorials. I have provided links to these tutorials in the description box below. Once we have filled the eligible array table and before we can select the eligible member, we need to sort array in a specific order. In this tutorial, we will cover how to write sorting code to rearrange the values in the eligible array table. I am using nested do while loops, which are a common programming technique used to handle complex tasks that require multiple iterations. This approach is especially helpful when working with multidimensional arrays or when performing calculation on large datasets. This is the outer loop that will run less than the total number of eligible members. And this is the inner loop that always starts one plus from the outer loop. The inner loop execution continues until the condition described in the inner loop is satisfied or true. If the condition in the if statement within the inner loop is true, the value of the variable replace max domain will be set to a value greater than zero. Once the inner loop completes, this if statement will be examined. If the value of replace max domain is greater than zero, the lines of code within the if statement will execute and the outer loop will be evaluated for the next iteration. Let's understand with animated example. To differentiate between the two loops, we will cover the values of the outer loop in red and the values of the inner loop in blue. To begin with, we need to set a value for the outer loop that determines the number of times it will run. In this scenario, we will use a value of 5, which indicates the number of eligible members who satisfy a specific condition and are included in the roster. The starting value of the variable loop x is 1. If this condition is true, then the PID saved from the row and column index 1 in the dummy variable max min age PID. In the next two lines, the age is saved in the two dummy variables from the row index 1 and column index 2. We invoke the inner loop which will begin from the subsequent number after the current number of the outer loop. Therefore, at this stage, the beginning point of the inner loop is 2. This loop will continue until the value of the loop y is less than or equal to, to the total number of eligible members in the house row. In the if-else statement, the value at row and column index 2 will be evaluated to determine if it is greater than or equal to to the value in the variable max min age 2. However, in our case, the value of max min age 2 is greater than the value at row and column index 2. Therefore, the logic inside the if block is not executed and since we don't have any code in the else block, the cursor will move to evaluate this condition for the next iteration of the loop. So at this time, the value of loop is 3, which is less than the value stored in the dummy variable eligible members. At this time, the value will be compared from row index 3 and column index 2. Again, at this point, the logic inside the if block will not execute because the value is less than the value in the variable max min h2. The same situation will happen in the rest of the inner loop because the value of max min h2 is greater than the rest of the ages in the eligible array table. At this point, since the inner loop did not result in any swapping, the value in replace max to min will remain zero. After the inner loop completes its execution, the if block outside the inner loop will not execute because the replace max to min value is zero. The cursor will move to the second iteration of the outer loop. 
once again the condition for the outer loop will be evaluated and if it is satisfied the outer loop will execute again at this point the value of loop x is 2 which is the less than the total number of eligible members the PID 3 is saved from the row index 2 and column index 1 in the dummy variable max min age PID. In the next two lines, the age is saved in two dummy variables from the row index 2 and column index 2. The inner loop will start from the next number after the current number of the outer loop and the condition inside the inner loop is checked. We begin by checking whether the age stored in the second column index of the third row is greater than or equal to to the age saved in the max min age 2 variable. If the condition is not met, no variables are updated and we move on to the next row in the loop. However, if the condition is satisfied, we update the max min age 2 variable with the new age value and store the row index in the replace max to min variable. This process is repeated until all rows are examined. If the variable replace max to min has a value greater than 0, if it does, it means we need to swap the values in the eligible array table. In this step, we perform two operations. Firstly, we move the PID from row index 4 and column index 1 to row index 2 and column index 1. And we also copy the age from the max min age 2 variable to row and column index 2. On the other hand, we copy the PID from the max min age PID variable to row index 4 and column index 1 and the age from the max min age 1 variable to row index 4 and column index 2. After the swap, the value of replace max to min is set to 0, indicating that the swap has been completed. If replace max to min is not greater than 0, then the else block will be executed and no swap will occur. This process continues until the outer loop has finished iterating through all the eligible members. Once the process is complete, the array table will be sorted in descending order. However, if you want to sort it in ascending order, you just need to replace the greater than symbol with the less than symbol in the inner loop. When you run the application again, the array table will be sorted in ascending order. Keep in mind that your respondent's order might be different depending on whether the array table is in descending or ascending order. Let me summarize the procedure we just went through. Firstly, we obtain the total number of eligible members and save their PIDs and ages in the eligible array table. We then sorted the data in either descending or ascending order. Finally, we used the cache grid to select a respondent from the eligible array table. I hope this tutorial was helpful in understanding how to sort and select respondents using array table. Keep learning and goodbye.